As we feed our body with its daily nourishment, let us not forget that more importantly, we must feed our souls with the Word of God, the food for our souls. Be a part of spreading the good news and nourishing others. Subscribe, like, share, and tap the notification bell in order to be updated every time we have a new reflection for you. Come, let us partake of the food for our souls. Good morning. Good morning, Paul. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. As I have explaining, I have been explaining for the past two Sundays already. Of course, we know that the Catholic Church, we in the church, we have our own calendar. We call that as the liturgical calendar. It is, of course, different from the civil calendar. That is the calendar that we use in our day-to-day -day transaction. The calendar that we use in society. Of course, the civil calendar, we know it is divided into how many months? 12 months. What's the first month? January. And what's the last month? December. But in the Catholic Church, we don't divide our liturgical calendar into months. We divide it into what we call as seasons. How many seasons again? Four seasons, Father. <laughs> I always get the answer, four seasons, Father. No, the liturgical calendar has six seasons. Okay? It's a different season you're thinking about. <laughs> okay? Not that not the four seasons the drink or four seasons that's the season of of course the nature. But the liturgical calendar has six seasons. And if the first month of the civil calendar is January, the very first season of the liturgical calendar is the Advent season. Okay, after Advent, what's the next season? It's too early to have test father on a Sunday morning. What's after Advent season? Christmas. So you have two. After Christmas, what's the next season? Ordinary season. Okay, after the ordinary, you have Lenten season. After the Lenten season, you have Paschal Triduum. After the Paschal Triduum, you have Easter and then after that, you're back to the ordinary season, the second part of the ordinary season. And of course, as I have mentioned, the first season is of course, season of Advent. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. That's why it is the new year of the church. And as we enter, of course, in the Advent season, as we enter every season, it's always good to review what does the season really mean. So that when we enter into the season, we are able to really spiritually enter into the season. Well, the first thing that we should know, of course, when we say Advent, the word Advent comes from the Latin word Adventus, which literally means coming or arrival. Because the Advent season is the season or the time that we prepare for the coming or the arrival of somebody. Who's coming? Jesus Christ. Now, of course, when we're thinking of the coming of Jesus Christ, I believe human as we are, immediately we're thinking of Christmas. But no, when we think of, we look at our doctrine, our teaching, there are two comings of Christ. The first coming is birth of Christ or incarnation, which we celebrate on December 25, on Christmas Day. But there's another coming. When is that? We don't know, Father, because nobody knows the day or nor the hour, right? When is, the, when is the second coming? At the end of times. That's why, let's uh, rewind a little. That's why if you remember, remember last Sunday, what was the feast that we celebrate? Christ the King. Oh, they're passing the test. Christ the King. What was the celebration the Sunday after, before that? It is always about the end of the world. Because our belief is that at the end of times, Christ will come again as a king to judge us all. That's why the very last two Sundays of our calendar in the church, the 33rd Sunday in ordinary time, always put it in your mind that the readings and the prayers will always be about the end of the world. And then the very last Sunday is always a celebration of the solemnity of Christ the King following the whole, of course, mystery of the life of Christ. Because 
the seasons in the liturgical calendar or calendar of the church is arranged in the way that it unfolds the whole mystery of the life of Christ in a systematic way or perhaps a better word to use is in an orderly manner right that's when you follow the liturgical calendar you're faithful to your Sunday obligations and your holidays of obligation the truth of the matter my dear brothers and sisters is if you are faithful to that Sundays holidays of obligation in one liturgical year you have seen the whole mystery of the life of Christ which is very important for us Catholics very imp important for us Christians why because our lives must be patterned after the life of Christ that's why it's very good for us very important to take notice always of the seasons of the church every time we come to mass therefore if there are two comings of christ the first is the birth christmas day the second is at the end of times the whole advent season is also divided into two parts the first part begins today first sunday of advent when does it end december 16th the second part begins December 17, ends on when? 24, because 25 is already Christmas Day. Now, of course, that is the beginning of the Christmas season. Now, of course, as I was telling you, because there are two comings of Christ, therefore the Advent season, which is a preparation for the coming of Christ, divided into two parts, one part focuses on one coming. The reflections, the prayers, the readings will always be focused on that coming, particular coming. The first part of the Advent season, which begins today until December 16, is a looking forward. Looking forward to what? To the second coming of Christ. That's why notice in our gospel today, you might be thinking, if you are very observant, you might be saying, Father, why is it that we are already nearing Christmas and all of a sudden the readings are about the end of the world? Listen to the very first part of the gospel. It says, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. In fact, if you go to the version of St. Mark, Saint Mark, it's more scary which was the gospel two Sundays ago. Because in the gospel of St. Mark, the, the version of Mark says, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will be falling from the sky. Can you imagine that? And the powers in the heavens will be shaken. That's scary. Rather than in the version of St. Luke, it's simpler. In the version of St. Luke, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. Okay? And, unlike the gospel of St. Mark, it's more scary, as I said. But I, as I have mentioned, since the first part of Advent focuses as a looking forward to the second coming of Christ, that's why the readings, the prayers will always be about the end of the world, the second coming of Christ. When we think, of course, of the second coming of Christ, we cannot help it. But of course, be sorry for the sins we have committed. Honestly, Anybody of us, any of us is ready to face the Lord right now, right? That's why when you think always of the end of the world, you cannot help it but be reminded of the sins that you have committed. That is why if you notice in the Advent season, the color of the season is purple, which is a sign of repentance, of being sorry. Now you might be thinking, but Father, Lenten season is also purple it's also repentance what's the difference between the two the truth is when you talk of the color of the season the advent season is bluish purple it's a little bluish okay just like the candle the glass but the lenten season it's really purple purple because the advent season is yes there's an element of being sorry for the sins we have committed because we are already waiting for the coming of the Messiah, but at the same time, we are happy as we are very sorry for the sins we have committed. We are happy for His coming. That's why theologically, 
we call the Advent season as a, as a joyful waiting for the Messiah. My dear brothers and sisters, that's the very reason why we have the Advent wreath. Why we have the Advent wreath on the Advent season. What do you see in the Advent wreath? The first thing that we must realize and notice in the Advent wreath is, I hope it is visible, that's why we place it that way. Notice, there's always the circle. Do you see the circle? I have to come closer, Father, to see it. Do you see it? Because the circle is the symbolism of, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. Remember that there's no shape that could ever express the Alpha and the Omega than the form of the circle. Even the weddings, right? When you look at your rings, there's no beginning, there's no end. It's, I am the Alpha and the Omega. That's when, when you look at the circle in the Advent wreath, it represents Jesus who is the Alpha and the Omega. And the Alpha and the Omega offered his life on the cross. I hope you can see the cross by the middle of the circle. It holds the circle, in fact, the center of the Advent wreath. The Alpha and the Omega offered his life on the cross. That's why there's the cross at the center. And notice what colors do you see in the Advent wreath? You see the most important, of course, the green color. When you say, or when you see green, what does it mean? Life. That's why the Alpha and the Omega, who offered this life on the cross, gave us life. And that's why, of course, we have also the four candles, which represents the four Sundays of the Advent season. Simply put, my dear brothers and sisters, when we light the first candle today on the first Sunday of Advent, let us not just say, wow, the first candle is already lit. Everything that we do in church represents something internally. When we light the first candle of the Advent wreath today, I hope it is truly meaningful in our life because it means by lighting the first candle of the Advent wreath, we are telling the Lord, Lord, from now on, starting today, I will prepare myself for your coming by making my life bright. And next Sunday, we'll be lighting another candle, brighter. Next, next Sunday, another candle, brighter, brighter. Until we reach the fourth Sunday, when my life will already be really bright, so that on Christmas Day, I can really accept you and receive you in my life. Because it is only when you have Jesus in your heart, can on December 25, it truly is Christmas Day for you. What does it mean simply in our life? As we light the first candle, that means light the dark moments, parts of our lives. What are those dark spots and factors of our life that we have to put light so that on Christmas Day, we are ready to receive the Lord. May this Advent wreath not only become a decoration for us, may this Advent wreath truly become a symbol of our spiritual preparation for the coming of the Lord. Thank you for partaking of the Word of God, the food for our souls, and being part of spreading the good news and nourishing others. May God bless and protect you.